Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Christina Rodriguez. Hello, my name is Alexandra Catramani. And we are case managers in the Education and Family Support Services Division at the University of Miami, Nova Southeastern University, Center for Autism and Related Disability. Today, we're going to be talking about understanding early childhood services and transitions to Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I am a former case manager for and Christina is a former teacher for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. So what is Early Steps? Early Steps is a government funded program for children from birth to the age of three. There is no income based requirement for families. So anybody is able to come in for a developmental evaluation and it is not based on the household income. So children need to have either an established condition or a developmental delay in order to qualify for early step services. Um, there are different branches depending on where the family lives. So it is all based on home zip code and that will be the early steps branch that your child will be assigned to and receive services if they do qualify for the program. So early step services are free of charge or parents can also opt into using their insurance. So what this means is if the parent does decide to go through their insurance, uh, early steps will bill the insurance and anything that the insurance uh, doesn't cover, early steps will cover it at 100%. If parents do not want to involve their insurance, uh, early steps will just directly um, get built and they will be the ones that will pick up any charges for the child's uh, therapy or treatment. So how the services work, uh, Early Steps believes in working with children in a natural environment to help reach their developmental milestones, meaning wherever it is that the child um, is during the day, that is where the therapist or the developmental specialist will be working with the child, whether it's at home, at daycare, or grandma's house, that is where the services will take place. Unless the child is receiving a specific type of therapy, for example, like physical therapy that would have to be um, at one of the centers just because of the instruments and tools that would be needed by the therapist. Um, so it just all depends on exactly what it is that the child is needing at that time. So how it works um, to schedule an initial evaluation. So if the family is interested in having their child evaluated, they would call a local early steps office and they would be directed to the early steps um, that does pertain to their home zip code. So once a family does call that office, um, one of the people from the office will go ahead and send them a referral form in which the family to complete and they would have to go ahead and send back to the office. So once those documentations are received by the local early steps office, um, they will receive an appointment in the mail within 45 calendar days from when those documents um, were received. Once that appointment is um, given in place, the family will then bring any other documentation for the child's initial evaluation, whether they've already had um, a specific evaluation already done prior to this early steps developmental evaluation, they would be able to go ahead and bring those documents on that day in order to show the specific therapist that will be working with the child. So the initial evaluation with early steps. So the evaluation is a full developmental evaluation which will evaluate all areas of development. Um, I want families to know because a lot of times there is some confusion as to what an early steps initial evaluation is. Um, this is not gonna be a speech evaluation or a physical therapy or occupational therapy evaluation. Um, this is a full developmental evaluation in which the therapist will evaluate all areas of development. So it'll be communication, with it, which is going to be both expressive and receptive, um, fine motor, gross motor, adaptive, and social-emotional areas. 
So the evaluation is conducted um, play-based and it usually takes about an hour. Um, and the family will be advised that day if their child is showing any delays and in what area. So they will have the entire report explained to them very thoroughly so that the parent understands exactly um, what was conducted and how that scoring took place. So if the child does not qualify, the family will be told um, right there that their child did not qualify, that they're not showing any developmental delays in order to qualify them for early step services. They will receive an entire uh, developmental report, which is called the Individualized Family Support Plan, also known as the IFSP for short. If the child is showing any delays in which they do qualify for early step services, um, they will have that all explained to them all of the results will be explained to the family and they will be told what services early steps can provide. So at this point, um, the family will determine whether or not they want to proceed with the early steps program or if they want to close the child's case and move forward in a different direction. So the transition meeting with early steps. This transition meeting can happen anywhere between 37, 27 to 36 months of age. Um, the family and the case manager will discuss what the next steps are once the child ages out of the early steps program. So if the family does decide whether or not they want to proceed with Miami-Dade County Public School pre-K ESE program, then we would move forward with conducting other sort, um, sort of steps. And if they do not, then the case will be closed prior to their birthday. So if the parent does give consent in order to release the child's information to Miami-Dade County Public School, a transition package will be put together by that child-specific case manager, and all of that information will be sent to the Miami-Dade County Public School staffing specialist who will review the child's information. So this staffing specialist will now be assigned to the child's case, and a staffing meeting will be scheduled with the family. If the parent does not give consent to release the child's information to Miami-Dade County Public School, then the child's services will be terminated the day right before their third birthday, and they will not continue to uh, the Miami-Dade County Public School pre-K ESE program. The exit evaluation with early steps. So every child who comes into the early steps program will receive an exit evaluation. So this exit evaluation is conducted for children who are turning three years old and are aging out of the program. So this is going to be a developmental evaluation that was conducted um, in the beginning, once the child entered early steps, it'll be the same developmental evaluation just to see the progress that the child made and where the child is developmentally at that point. And these results will determine the progress of the child and if they will be able to proceed with Miami-Dade County Public School pre-ESE program, depending on how the child scores in that exit evaluation. So these results, um, like I said, will determine if the child will qualify for pre-K ESE program once they turn three years old. So if they don't qualify for the early steps program um, exit evaluation transition to Miami-Dade County Public School, um, then it's it could be that they aren't going to qualify for that pre-K ESE program, but if these results do show that they're still showing some type of delay, then that information will be sent to the staffing specialist that will contact the family to schedule that staffing meeting. Okay, so um, as, Alex, as Alexander was mentioning, the um, staffing specialist is a person that works under um, what we call fiddlers. Um, so I'll be describing what what Fiddlers and Child Finds is. So Fiddlers is the Florida Diagnostic and Learning Resources System. They provide diagnostic, instructional, and technological support services to district exceptional education programs and families of children with disabilities. So within Fiddlers, there is the Child Finds program. So um, in order to get into pre-K ESC, to transition from that early childhood into, uh, or the, the birth to three into the uh, pre-K program, um, there's two routes that you can take. The early steps route, which Alexandra already explained, 
um, or Child Find. So Child Find is uh, their services that help to promote general public awareness of programs and services available for young children who have or are at risk of developing disabilities. Child Find uh, provides service coordination for diagnostic screening, placement, training, and support. This is on their website. And um, in the description of this video, we're gonna add links for, um, for the Early Steps uh, website. We're gonna add links for the Child Find and Fiddler's website, as well as some other pre-K resources that we're gonna discuss a little bit later on. Um, so if you're gonna go the Child Find route, let's say you have your child is already three and you have not, um, you never went through Early Steps, which is okay, um, then you would, you would start by doing a referral to Child Find. So on the website, parents themselves can fill out the referral, or you can have a therapist or a pediatrician or somebody like that do a referral online. Once you fill that out, um, the, uh, the child find will contact the family, and there will be a review of current evaluations. If there are any, there's going to be a screening appointment. And as a result of that screening appointment, if it indicates that the child does not need further testing, then child find will recommend um, other agencies that if they're needed, or they will, if, if, it, if the child find screening does result in um, the need for more evaluation, then they will also be referred to the pre-K staffing uh, contact. So from here on, this process will look the same, whether they're coming from early steps or they're coming from child find. The mm -hmm. um, staffing specialist will begin this process for pre-K uh, kindergarten, for pre-K ESE. Um, so at pre-K ESD, if the child finds screening evaluation determines that further testing is needed, or if the child's exit evaluation at early steps determines um, that, you know, that they are that they qualify for these services, they will still have the, the following evaluation through pre-K ESD. So it'll be a hearing test, a vision test, a speech and language evaluation, and a full psychological and educational test. Following that, there will be a staffing conference. And after the so after the evaluation is completed, they have, they've done all the, the things that we previously mentioned. The parent um, or guardian will be contacted by the pre-kindergarten staffing specialist to attend a, staff a staffing conference to discuss the results of the evaluation, determine eligibility of services and placement. And we'll go into what those look like as well. So placement. So Alexandra mentioned before, that through early steps, what they do is an individualized family service plan, right? So that is a plan that is, is done for the family as a whole. Once they start and they're evaluated in pre-K ESC, the plan turns into what is called an IEP or an individual education plan. So that is specific for the child's needs in an educational setting, in a classroom setting. So, um, that is written, um, which will include educational goals to be carried out during the school day, along with any relevant educationally related therapies. So what does that mean? And I always like to bring this up and explain to, to families. Um, Miami-Dade County Public Schools, if students are eligible, they may provide speech and language therapy. They may provide occupational therapy and physical therapy. Now, these therapies have to be determined to help the child access the curriculum. So just because a child has a diagnosis, let's say of autism, does not automatically qualify them for any of these therapies. They have to be educationally related therapies and the goals have to be written in a way or the needs have to be in order for the child to access their curriculum. If, if, if they need these services for other reasons, they may or may not qualify. So it's always important for everybody to keep that in mind. Um, and then a program placement and school will be assigned during the development of the IEP. So we're, we'll go over the different placements, um, the different classroom placements, um, but this is, a, this is a decision that is made in this staffing meeting. So there are multiple um, options for pre-K settings um, and it's, it's it's important for you know, families to go in with an understanding of what each of these will look like. Um, the team will decide what is best for the child based on the evaluation. Um, but there are, like I said, there are multiple options. So it, it's good for you to, to be aware of those. Then the child will be um, placed in the school where that is closest to the child's home 
but that has that program. So not every school has every single program. So let's say you qualify for, or your child qualifies for a LEAP program, but your homeschool doesn't have that, then they will be placed at a school nearest in that area that does have that program. Um, and then the parent must register the child at the designated school before he or she can attend classes. So they must be registered at that time. Then the IEP is, um, it is valid for one year from when it is created. So program models and related services. So I'm gonna stop sharing really quick so that I can um, show you this website. So in this website, and again, I'm going to, we're going to link this in the description of this video so that you have these available to you. And you can go, if you're preparing for your staffing conference, you can log on to this website, you can watch this website, you can read um, about all the different settings that Pre-K ESC has and, and a number of other things as well. Um, and we're also going to link the early steps um, website and the child find and, and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, so these, right here, you can go through all of these. It tells you the times that the classes run through, the ages, um, the, um, the staffing that they have, what kind of instruction. Um, again, educationally relevant therapies are provided on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and then, so some of our, the, the ones that we really see the most within, the, within um, autism is the self-contained ASD, um, we also have the half day leap. So half day, this is a, a question that we get a lot. Half day is either a morning session, which is 8.20 to 10.50, or a PM session, which is 11.20 to 1.50. So um, you, uh, the, the child, depending on, on, there's a lot of reasons, that, like a lot of things that come into this. So it depends on if there are spots available for that setting at whatever time in the school that you're gonna, um, that, that your child would be attending. So um, there may be a morning session, there may be an afternoon session. You may get lucky and have the choice, but it's not, that's not always the case. It's mm -hmm. more um, depending on the availability of the classroom. Um, so that's always an option for those uh, families that would want their child to attend school for a few hours, but also want to um, you know, have therapies during different times of the day. Um, then there's reverse mainstreaming. Um, so the difference between LEAP and reverse mainstream is that LEAP is considered an inclusive setting with a combination of typically developing peers and children diagnosed with or suspected of being on the autism spectrum in a two to one ratio, right? So LEAP is only for children that are, that are diagnosed with autism, where the half day reverse mainstream is the majority of the children do have an IEP and there are some role models um, and this is a uh, varying exceptionality, it's usually not just autism. Um, and then, like I said, a number of other, uh, of other programs that you can go through, but those are usually our more, um, the ones that we see the most, the reverse mainstream, the leap, the inclusion, um, mm -hmm. things like that. So, here. And these are all written out. So the console, VPK, or Head Start, inclusion, reverse mainstream, LEAP, self-contained for autism and for children that are diagnosed with an intellectual disability, walk-in speech and language therapy, hospital and homebound instructional programs, and prescribed pediatric extended care. So that pretty much concludes um, our presentation. Um, and um, so for those of you tuning in that are not very familiar with CARD, um, if you have a child um, with autism or with a uh, related disability and you would like to register with us here mm -hmm. at CARD, it's um, very simple. Um, you just call one of the numbers here, the 189 autism um, and you will speak to one of our, um, of our, uh, receptionist and they will um, assign you an appointment or they will you will make an appointment with them so that you can meet with a case manager and then we will um, do a full uh, intake with you we'll get some information it's very simple right now with everything with um, the pandemic that we have going on 
um, we are, are offering phone um, intake and also virtual intake. So you will have the option of the two. So you can do that by calling and making an appointment or you can, with your phone's uh, camera, you can scan this code um, and it'll take you straight to our pre-registration form. You fill out a couple of things that gets, straight, gets sent straight to our receptionist and um, they will, again, um, call you back, set up an appointment. Same thing if you just wanna go through the website, you can also access the, that pre-registration form there. Um, uh, and then you will meet with us. It's very simple, very quick. And then you will be assigned a case manager. Um, from that point forward, we will be able to, to help you and make any recommendations, um, any new suggestions of anything that, that you need. Lastly, here is our link for all of our social media platforms. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, and we really try to um, stay connected with everybody. So we are constantly posting um, events that we have coming up, trainings, things also in the community as well. So anything that you need, you'll be able to do that. We're constantly trying to do Instagram lives or Facebook lives or, or things on Twitter to be able to connect with, with everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys. And we will see you all soon. Have a great day.